So in this video, we're going to calculate a Taylor, polyno Taylor polynomial of fifth degree at the point pi over 4 for the function cosine of x. And the formula for a Taylor series, you need to know three important things. You need to know the degree of the amount of terms you're going to use. So in our case here, we're going to work the fifth degree. So that's our thing there. So n is 5. And at the point pi over 4, so in our case here, a is pi over 4, and the function is cosine of x. So that's the function we're interested in. And the generic formula is here. This is it here. So where you see an n, we're going to substitute a 5. And when you see a, we're going to substitute pi over 4, because that's the point we're interested in. So t5 of x, that's the uh, symbol for fifth degree Taylor polynomial. And then the first term here you see is f of a, which would be f of pi over 4. So that basically would become the cosine of pi over 4. Then we've got the first derivative of pi over 4 divided by 1 factorial x minus a, which is pi over 4, to the power of 1. Then the second derivative at pi over 4, that's a, divided by 2 factorial times x minus pi over 4 squared. And again, here we've got the third derivative of pi over 4 divided by 3 factorial and x minus pi over 4 cubed. So as you see, there's a little pattern forming here. We've got on the top of these uh, fractions, we've got first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, fourth derivative. And in this one here, the n would become 5 because that's the fifth term we need. So n is 5, so it's the fifth derivative. And then on the bottom, we've got 1 factorial. 2 factorial, 3 factorial, 4 factorial, and n is 5, so 5 factorial. And then the powers of x minus a, well here we would have 5, and 4, 3, 2, and 1. So that's how the generic formula works. So now we're going to start substituting some values, but we're going to do it steady and one step at a time. So in this next stage, we're going to substitute the a's for pi over 4 to see what we've got. And when we've done that, we can do the differentiating of the cosine of x five times and the value of each derivative at pi over 4. So, we draw up a nice little table. First line of the table, we put the function, which is cosine of x. And then we evaluate cosine of x at pi over 4, which is 1 over root 2. You could also say that it's root 2 over 2, which would be correct. But when dealing with Taylor polynomials, it's far easier to put 1 over root 2. And you'll see why later when we come to calculate the final um, calculations for it. So, first derivative of cosine is minus sine. And sine of pi over 4 is 1 over root 2. So minus sine of pi over 4 is minus 1 over root 2. OK, so now we're going to calculate the rest of the derivatives. You see them here. Second derivative is minus cosine. Well, plus cosine, we calculated at 1 over root 2. So minus cosine is minus 1 over root 2. And then the third derivative, which is sine of x, is the value of sine of x at pi over 4, which is 1 over root 2. So we calculated that minus sine is minus 1 over root 2. So positive sine would be plus 1 over root 2. And you can see now there's a pattern forming here now. So we've got cosine, cosine here, minus sine here, minus sine here. And then on top of that we've got cosine, positive cosine here, negative cosine here, and then positive cosine here. Same for the sine. We've got minus sine here, plus sine here, and a minus sign here. So this pattern, when you're doing trigonometric, trig trigonometric uh, differentiation, you get four terms in a sequence, and then that sequence is then repeated inf in infinite many times. So we've got cosine, minus sine, minus cosine, sine. And then after that, we're back to cosine, cosine, minus sine, and then we'd have minus cosine and then plus sine again. So that's what would happen if you went to more degrees. So if you went to the eighth degree, you could quickly work out all these values because you just keep repeating all these values for every fourth term. So the first derivative is the same as the fifth derivative. 
second derivative, same as the sixth derivative, and so on and so on. So now we've calculated our derivatives, we're going to substitute those, substitute those a's for pi over 4. So now we've got t5x, f of a is now pi over 4, and now you see we put pi over 4 where there was an a before. So that's in all these terms here. All in all, 11 times we put in pi over 4. That's why it's always important to do it one step at a time. That way then we don't make any mistakes. So now we can clearly see that we've got to calculate, we've got to insert the derivatives of first derivative of pi over 4, second derivative of pi over 4, third derivative of pi over 4, fourth derivative of pi over 4, and so on. And we've calculated all those here. So basically all we're going to do now is these values in this column here, which derivative they match up to, we're just going to substitute them in. And then also the factorials on the bottom, we can just clear those up because that's nice and easy. So one factorial you know, is 1 times 1, 2 factorial is 2 times 1 times 2, 3 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3, 4 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, and 5 factorial 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. So what do we get now? So this pi over 4, function of pi over 4, we calculated, if we look at the top here, was 1 over root 2. So therefore we just put the 1 over root 2 in its place. The next one we've got is a fraction, so it's the first derivative of pi over 4 divided by 1 factorial. So the first derivative of pi over 4 was minus 1 over root 2. So now we've got the minus 1 here and the root 2 here, so that's our minus 1 over root 2. And then the 1 factorial is just the 1. And then the x minus pi over 4 stays. And all these x minus pi over 4s to certain powers, they all stay. Then we've got the second derivative at pi over 4, which we calculated at minus 1 over root 2. So then we've got minus 1 root 2. So that goes in there. And then at the, at the denominator is multiplied by 2 factorial, which is 2. Then we've got the third factorial at pi over 4 which is 1 over root 2, so then we've got 1 root 2, and then times 3 factorial in the denominator, which is 6, so root 2 times 6, x minus pi over 4 cubed stays. Fourth derivative was plus 1 over root 2, positive 1 over root 2, so that one stays there like that, that's the 1 over root 2, and then the 4 factorial is then 24, x minus pi over 4 to the power of 4 stays. The fifth derivative, pi over 4, is minus 1 over root 2. So then we put that in there in the place of this one. So that's minus 1 over root 2. And then 120, that represents the 5 factorial. And then x minus pi over 4 to the power of 5, that just stays there, just comes down there like that. So now we can do some simplification. And to simplify this, it's not uh, too, too difficult actually. We're just going to break it down and just go down the bottom there. So 1 over root 2, that stays. This minus 1 over root 2 times 1, well the root 2 times 1 can stay as root 2. This minus can now flip this plus to a minus sign and then get rid of this one. And the x minus pi over 4 we can just put on the top. So x minus pi over 4 divided by root 2. That's a lot more tidy looking than what this is. Same again here, we've got a minus 1 over root 2. So again, flip the plus sign to a minus sign get rid of the minus 1, the x minus pi over 4 squared can go on the top, then this root 2 times 2 could just become 2 root 2. So that's how we get to this one. Next one we've got 1 over root 2, so the 1 we can just get rid of because we won't need that. The root 2 times 6 could just become 6 root 2, and the x minus pi over 4 to the cubed can just go on the numerator. And that's how we end up with this one here. And the last, the last but one, we've got x minus pi over 4. So that one can just go on the top to replace the 1. 1 times that would just leave it the same. And root 2 times 24 is 24 root 2. So 24 root 2 goes on the denominator. And then on the last one, the minus 1, as before in the earlier terms, we just flip the plus sign to a minus. That leaves a plus 1. And the x minus pi over 4 to the 5 we can bring on the top, which is multiplied by 1, which means we can get rid of the 1. And then the root 2 times 120 just becomes 120 root 2. And there's our answer. So that's the final term. So there we go. So our Taylor polynomial for cosine of x at pi over 4 is now written as this. t5 of x equals 1 over root 2 minus 
x minus pi over 4 over root 2 minus x minus pi over 4 squared 2 root 2 plus x minus pi over 4 cubed over 6 root 2 plus x minus pi over 4 to the power of 4 divided by 24 root 2 minus x minus over x minus pi over 4 to the power of 5 divided by 120 root 2 and that's your answer okay thanks for watching